Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am your host, LJ Walker, a real estate investor helping you realize your dreams of owning a home or investing in one. Today, let's walk down memory lane and have a black history moment. Many of you know Jackie Robinson as being a famous baseball star who broke into the major leagues. However, what many people don't seem to really talk about is his business prowess, what he owned. One of the things he actually owned is a bank called Freedom National Bank. It was out here in Harlem, it started in the 60s, and it ended in the 90s. It was quite controversial when it started because, you see, Jackie Robinson wasn't alone. He did team up with some white people, and that did disturb one very famous person uh, that we all know and love, and that was Malcolm X, because he really wanted, he meaning Malcolm, really wanted it to be, you know, all black. Needless to say, um, it was successful in the beginning. It did hit some rock, rocky points um, around the 70s, but it recouped. And then unfortunately, in the 90s, when the recession hit, it hit it hard, so hard that the doors of the bank had to close. So I always advocate uh, that one should be the bank. And what I wanted to also point out to you is this, that that bank did make most of its money from the loans that it lent out to people who were going to be homeowners. And yes, it did help those who were gonna be business owners as well, but the vast majority of its money that it made came from mortgages, just like most other banks that are out here, okay? Because that's something that many people fail to realize. So that's why I, I want to emphasize that. And also, I need to emphasize that because I invest in mortgage notes. So let's look at what really went wrong here. From what I gather, now I am from Harlem. I remember it closing but I don't remember all of the facts. So I had to do my little research to find out, okay, you know, exactly uh, what occurred because the recession hit a number of banks. Why is it that there are some banks that are still around and that particular one had to close? From my understanding, uh, from the articles that I read, the one issue is team. Many of the people who worked in the bank had good hearts, cared about the community. As a matter of fact, let us let me rewind for a second. The main reason why Jackie Robinson started that bank is because back in the 60s, there was a lot of redlining going on. Many black people who qualified for loans were denied loans. They were denied mortgages due to racism. So he felt that in order for black people to have a fair chance and a fair shot, he would open this particular bank, loan out money, uh, so that black people could become business owners, homeowners, 
etc. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what they did. Uh, many of the other banks uh, outside of Carver, uh, Federal Savings and Loan, would not loan most Black people anything at all. So Freedom National Bank was the other alternative. And many people felt like it was a community when they went in there. Like uh, they weren't just speaking to someone who was just in it for the money. They were speaking to a family person, a family member, a relative, etc. But here's the thing. Yes, um, hiring people who have a good heart, who are nice, can be wonderful, but it actually, it can also hurt you if they don't have the skill set. I've seen this in a lot of organizations, not just, quote unquote, you know, not just predominantly black organizations or in this case, biracial, if you will because his part he did have white partners but what it is is that a lot of a lot of times people will be so enthralled with a person who is nice overlooking their skills saying oh uh they'll learn as they go along but that does not always happen there are some people who are very slow there are some people that will always be inept because where they are is not really where they belong and next some people really need to be trained most people even those who are educated even those who are experienced they need to be trained on how you expect a job to be done and how you expect it to to run your team is one of the most important elements in your business so that's one reason but that's really not the only reason okay um because of the recession when your team uh, does not have the skills they don't know how to turn things around they don't know how to bounce back okay uh, they don't know how to strategize all right, but that's not the only thing though. If you look again and you read on uh, other articles, you'll also find that there were some government regulations that were changed. You see, way back in the day, uh, for, or for many, many years, honestly, many hotels would not accept black people they didn't want any minorities as a matter of fact because even chinese people and hispanic people will tell you that they couldn't even go into hotels even italians so most minorities what they would do is if somebody was visiting uh, like a preacher or a minister they wouldn't go to a hotel. They would go and stay in somebody's house. Singers such as Patti LaBelle, Gladys Knight, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, they really didn't stay in hotels until probably, you know, the late 70s, uh, early 80s. But before then, they were staying in someone else's home. They would rent a room, a floor, an apartment, what have you, stay there so that they could get up and do whatever job it is that they needed to fulfill, right? But around the 1990s, New York started to crack down on how people were renting rooms and what have you. Uh, we used to have single room occupancy, right? 
We don't have single room occupancy anymore. That has been outlawed in New York City. We used to have that for a long time, as a matter of fact. But I do remember, I don't remember if it was 1990 exactly, but it was definitely in the 90s, um, probably more the late 90s when they started to uh, outlaw that. And if you had a single room occupancy uh, property, if it had that designation, and if you uh, cut up the, uh, the rooms that way, you had to modify your building and turn it into an apartment and not just, you know, room over here, room over there, like a, like a hotel. So, um, that anyway, needless to say, that's what many black people did because to supplement their income. And that's how they were able to pay the mortgage. Once that became illegal, they couldn't pay their mortgage anymore because that extra income wasn't coming in. Some, of course, was able to, you know, sneak and get away with, with, with it. But if they were found out, then they couldn't pay back that mortgage because they just didn't make enough money to do so. And when I, when I read this, when I did that research, I said to myself, you know what? I wonder why Airbnb did not use this as an example as to why uh, it should uh, be, it should not be so heavily regulated in New York City. You see, in New York, you can do Airbnb. It's just that it has to be 30 days or more. It can't be 30 days or less. You understand? And when they changed that rule, so many people, including landlords, lost out on that income. Some tenants too, because you have tenants here that could not pay their rent and they used Airbnb as a side hustle to give them money. And some for some people, it wasn't even a side hustle. For some people, it was their livelihood. You have people who are retired and they have a little bit of pension, not enough. So yes, they'll rent their room. You have some people who are retired and get no money at all. They, the job didn't have a pension or, or they have, um, you know, you also have some, some people who just didn't, don't have anything at all. No kind of savings, no nothing. So they depended on Airbnb for income to pay their rent or income to pay the mortgage. And I fear that the same thing that happened back uh, during Jackie Robinson time may also happen again now because you have this moratorium. Some people, now in some states, yes, the moratorium ended but you do have some states that want to reenact the moratorium and bring it back again. The courts are, are overcrowded. So, and then um, New York is really not the only state that has heavy regulations. There are other states, and I've, I've heard, overheard that there are some cities where they have outlawed Airbnb. You see, and I really feel that that they should, uh, they meaning the politicians and Airbnb, they need to revisit this situation. You see, when you forget history, history will have, uh, will is doomed to repeat itself. 
so the saying goes and i believe that it may repeat itself if they don't get this thing together you already have properties going into foreclosure and when you have too many properties going into foreclosure like this banks might begin to lose their money now the only positive to a certain degree is that because many properties around the United States, the value has gone up. Banks, many banks will definitely uh, be able to recoup whatever losses in mortgage by just selling the property. But that's not, it's still not going to be everywhere. And the people who are going to get hurt probably will be the smaller banks, not so much the big banks, right? So then you're going to be looking at bailouts for banks. So guys, uh, that's all I have for you. Let me know in the comments, um, those of you who are listening to me on YouTube, what do you think? How do you feel regarding the whole situation? Taking what happened to us in the past when you look at Freedom Bank till right now. All right. That's something that I'm going to give you to chew on. Please feel free to share this amongst your friends because each one, reach one, teach one. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.